Hey there, welcome back to the Win A Pageant Podcast. I'm your coach, Alicia Darby. Now this episode features a client of mine who agreed to three specific things, to be coachable, to be vulnerable, and to have her coaching session recorded and published in order to help you. So I know that a lot of women who haven't had pageant coaching before don't really know what to expect or how much can you really even get done in 30 minutes. So this client of mine agreed to have her session recorded in order to show you what gets done and how it gets done during a virtual coaching session. Okay. So I want you to listen to this call from two different perspectives. First of all, I want you to think, could pageant coaching, especially virtually, even be something that could help you in your pageant prep. I want you to be thinking about that. At the end of the video, I'll tell you how you could make that a reality for you. Uh, The second thing that I really, really want you to pay attention to is I want you to think the things that I'm sharing with her, the coaching that I'm giving her, how can you apply that coaching to your own pageant prep, okay? What are the things that she's learning in this and the skills that she's developing and the strategy that she's learning? How can you apply that to yourself? I'm so grateful that this client allowed me to record this call because I know a lot of the things that she learned during this call will support you in your pageant prep. So sit back with an open mind, maybe get a notepad and a pen handy because a lot of this coaching is gonna apply to you too, all right? Enjoy. So tell me what you want to work on today. How can I help you? Um, I guess just interview. Um, I've done Mrs. Pageants before, and I guess just kind of trying to my my platform is my nonprofit organization, which is um, Youth Fitness Link, okay. which the idea is to build healthy, positive relationships on the inside and out for kids. Um, mm. Now my Skype's going crazy. <laughs> crazy on my oh, I'm telling my you, this technology is overwhelmed <laughs> these days. Stop <laughs> it. What? <laughs> um, I've been trying to load that for like 10 minutes on my laptop. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. Anyways. Um, so, yeah, I guess just kind of trying to figure out the best way to present it um, and just really nail it and build confidence and interview. And I guess yeah. sponsorships, especially now with me owning a gym and not working. Of yeah. <laughs> what's the best Yay. way to go about that? Does that feel good or what? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, well. <laughs> You're like, this is a new kind of way of being. Yeah, because it is it is interesting the, um, that gym, have you been doing things online for clients or? I have, um, I haven't been charging just because everybody else and their brother is doing, like I'm going live every day at two. Um, okay, that's and cool. there's so much that people are doing for free. I feel bad yeah. charging people that can't pay for it either. So Right, yeah, yeah. Trying to figure true. out. Dynamics. All right, this is good. So tell me about, um, tell me a little bit about your nonprofit. Like, what is the mission, the big mission behind it? Uh, basically, just build positive, healthy, positive relationships on the inside and out for um, adolescents ages ten to seventeen. So here in North what's Carolina, that look like, like, tell me what's um, that mean? Like, what's that, what would it look like when it happens? So basically, it's just groups of kids, and we kind of get together and um, play games and stuff in order to and talk about like health and nutrition a little bit, but more just play games and make fitness fun. Um, nice. Like we'll just do like relay races and stuff like that, like mm. a PE class um, kind of idea, but more fun than just a PE class. And of course, yeah. no grades, like a YMCA program. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, good. And it's in person. They meet in person. Yeah, okay. my studio. Yeah, normally my studio. Um, I wanted to set some stuff up in my church, but we just lost our gym at our church. So yeah, okay, okay, cool. And how long have you been doing this? Um, about three years now. Wow, this is great! All these things I need to keep up with you, girl. I love <laughs> oh, all of this. Friends. Yes, you're the one having all the fun. Uh, well, we both are now in our in our respective <laughs> respective industries. Um, cool. This is great. So. So tell me about your, um, I'm assuming that right now when you compete in pageants, you use the nonprofit as your platform. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And so, and you've done Mrs. Pageants before, uh, in the mm-hmm. same system. I've done Mrs. America, um, North okay. Carolina three times and okay. then did, uh, Cosmos twice and oh, nice. North American, um, or North America once. Okay, great. And what's this one that you're competing in now? Uh, It was going to be United States, but it was May 3rd, and I have not heard anything at all. So the national pageant's been bumped back, but I have not heard anything. Okay. They're probably still... 
I'm sure they'll still do it, but I would imagine so. But it is, it's tough because a lot of people, I'm even finding this in our community. I know a lot of people that have events, event businesses, and it's hard for them to know they don't want to book out another date and then do all the marketing push. And then what if it gets moved again? You know, so it's, so I'm sure they'll connect with you. Um, but this is good. And you're wise to keep, you know, moving forward anyway, because you don't want them to be like, surprise, it's going to be next right. month. And then you're like, ah, okay, let me figure this out. You know, so this is great. So, okay. Tell me about, um, like, tell, because you've probably thought about this since you've competed in enough enough pageants and enough systems over the last couple of years. Tell me how you already, what is your kind of rough draft of how you connect if you were to win at the national level? We always want to think about national level. So if you were to win at the national level, what would, what access would you have or what, what reach would you have in order, what would you be able to create with your platform that you wouldn't be able to from where you're at right now? Have you thought through like how that would change things? Kind of, um, just realizing how important it is, just how important fitness is. Um, yeah. In North Carolina, 31% of adolescents ages 10 to 17 are considered obese. And I know nationwide that number is right around those same lines, but still yeah. pretty high, higher in some places, less in other places, of course. Um, but just reaching more people and getting more volunteers because it is just me right now and I'm just one person. And, yeah. you know, the sparkly hat's great, but it's the microphone. Mm hmm. Yeah, I love it. So, um, okay, so looking, so you're, you're looking to add volunteers. That's your biggest thing. Is the nonprofit that you're doing right now, is it local just to your area? Or is this something it is? Okay. And is it something is the model that you've created replicable? Is it something that somebody else could do elsewhere? It is. And I, and I use the term nonprofit. I haven't built up any like the legal stuff behind it or anything okay. like that. I've not gone into that yet just because it ends up being friends of mine right now and their kids yeah so it's okay. just kind of like okay um it's more I'll casual for now it. informal yeah, yeah. okay yeah. Good. that's great yeah and that's and you don't need to right now I say that I I think that the time that you start, need to start doing that is for when it when it grows beyond control so once <laughs> you're like okay now I need legal protection once you start to do taking donations and things like that, that's when you'll want to say like, okay, let's get official here, you know? Um, but yeah. Okay. So volunteers. Okay. So how have you thought, have you thought, if not, uh, I can create some ideas, but how have you thought about, let's say that you win this and you now become the Mrs. United States, the national title holder, but you've got this program only in North Carolina. How can you duplicate this or what can you take kind of on the road? Um, my thought was just volunteers and you can find a park. I mean, there's nothing really that you need. I mean, the exercises can be done and I've posted some stuff online, um, and stuff like that too, for just like family workouts and stuff. But, um, you really don't need anything. It's not a cost to start it up. You really just need people that are willing to hang out with some kids. Great. Okay, cool. So you need the people that are willing, you need the kids and then yeah. you need to know like, what are the exercises? So like, for example, I, I'm not a parent and I don't hang around kids of ages 10 to 17. But if this were something that I were like, I want to start this in San Diego, like where might I begin as it stands right now, as your program is right now? If I was like, I, I choose me, I want to do this. What would it be the next step? Basically, I would just say, hey, you know, go to a church, um, find kids there or a local school or a YMCA. Um, the idea is also to teach kids how important teamwork is and kind of combat racism and bullying mm, through working good. through our kids. Um, yeah. Because kids, you know, kids don't see color. Kids don't see when they're working together on a team. It's about that common goal. And I think that yeah. by leading, by kids leading that example that adults are like, Oh, Hey, there, there's no confrontation, no conflict going on here. They're working together. Wow. Yeah. It's not that hard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, good. Um, okay, I like this. So here's what I'm thinking for you. The, the biggest thing about these pageants when on the national, especially on the national level, but of course it applies at the state level because it must, um, it, you're kind of proving things at any state pageant. So you mentioned that you'd done the Miss America North Carolina pageant before. Anything that you are doing, you want to prepare at the national level, okay? So the 
what I would recommend for you, and you can do this because you're a business owner, you know how to work things online, you're a fitness professional, so you know how to, how to craft like training uh, curriculum, if you will. So what I think that would be really valuable for you is if you had some type of like, um, you know how CrossFit has the workout of the day? And CrossFits around the world are doing the workout of the day, right? And everybody's hashtagging it and everybody's re-showing what they did and stuff. Imagine if you had something like that, but it was perhaps it's like of the week. And yeah. it's specifically focused for those things you mentioned, for team building, for um, I, I like the concepts of like if you found what what would be things that 10 to 17 need to learn in addition to teamwork and anti-bullying, there might be other hot button issues that somewhere like a YMCA already has in their curriculum, but they're teaching it like classroom style. But you would be creating exercises, an exercise of the week or a game of the week. It could even be, you know, however you reference it. And it still is getting the job done in terms of working out self-confidence. It's going to always build those things. But every week there's a new interesting like Um, twist and maybe it's a quote that they learn or a mantra or a scripture or something that they anchor back to every week that everybody around the globe could be in unison on sharing about you know drawing up and then all you have to do is you create okay here it is perhaps there are people in on your email list maybe maybe they sign up for a specific email list and every Sunday the email goes out with here's the the one of the week and anybody can sign up no matter where you are it's something that they could even do. Even they could, maybe you even have some individual ones. Like let's say that I'm, I don't have an organization or a group of friends or something. So maybe this is something I would do to my with myself. Like maybe I don't play the game, but I can still read the scripture, or I can still have the journal, or I can still whatever elements are important that, to go with it. You know, then I would create a kind of like a, a manual of what would somebody like me who's like. You know, I don't know. I don't know how, where to even begin with this. I've never taught PE before. Like, I don't teach children before. But if I could read your curriculum, your, your like a training manual of like, okay, here's why this program is important, and then here are the things that you would want to include. Here's how to respond when there is a sore loser, when one of the teams loses. Here's how to explain to them about the difference between winning and losing in, in the game, and then how it's translated to life and, and principles. So then you could, you could potentially, as you become Mrs. United States, I would love to see where you have a team of people where perhaps even once a month you get on a call with all of those, a Zoom call or something like that, yeah. where around the world everybody can tune in and they feed off of your motivation and your training like you are the leader training leaders. So now you've got influence over them and then they've got influence over all of the 10 to 17 year olds. You could, in that training manual, you could have a, you know, one page document of like, here is our mission statement. Here is the description of the people we serve. Here's how to reach out to your local church. Here's what, how to explain it to them. Here are the days of the week that we see. Here is, are some marketing pieces. You know, you could even create like, you know, you probably use Canva. Do you use Canva for marketing? I do, yeah. Okay. So you could use Canva to create some marketing pieces, some I would every week I would have a and you could just make a template and and just change up the little things, you know, I would have a story, an Instagram story, a post that they could post on Facebook or on um, Instagram. And then I would have a downloadable like like a piece of paper that the teacher could print out. And so on Sunday, boom, everything goes out. And here is the whatever we're calling it, like the workout of the day. But it would be like the. Um, you know, I don't know the the game. I like the idea of game for youth, um, or the youth link of the week, or the like something like that. Like some give it some fun, simple name that then now everybody's being able to talk about it, right? So now you're able to start okay. a movement. Now it's not hyper hyper local. Okay. How does this feel okay. for you? I love it. Do you think that it's strong enough to? I mean, I know most people going into a national pageant are linked up with Wounded Warrior or Red Cross. Is it? I mean, for me to have a nonprofit that is basically just getting started, yeah, I've been doing it for years, but it's not, you know, it's 10 people. Um, right. yeah. Is it strong enough to, and granted, of course, I'll have to work with it, but is it strong enough yeah. to take to a national level or should I, you know, this is what I do and it's linked on to this greater cause? So what a lot of women, it, 
I'm going to, I'm going to answer your question. I'm going to say why that happens. I'm going to answer your question and then I'm going to give you a plan of what to do. Okay. The reason that, the reason that this happens is because most women do not know their nose from their elbow. And so they're like, oh, my, my platform is the American Heart Association. And here's all the work I've done for them. And I do 50 hours a week and I'm, and I'm, the, and everything that they are talking about has less to do with their own brand and more to do with the brand of the American Cancer Society, the Relay for Life or whatever the other thing. So what I think you are doing is actually light years better than somebody okay. who only attaches themselves to, oh, my platform is the Relay for Life or whatever, all these other things, you know? And the reason that women are doing that is because they just think that that's what they're supposed to do because that's what everyone else is doing, okay? What you're doing will be so much more unique. It will be more interesting for people to actually talk about. Okay, so then, so, so that kind of like, like says, why is that happening? Because girls don't know to start something on their own. Uh, yours is better. And we have to still phrase it in a way that shows them that you've got proof that this is actually happening. This isn't just some like, you know, pie in the sky that it's like, actually, this is going down. And that it is, there's a plan to make it work long term. Okay. So if you were to just say, oh, I do this with my local community, if you're just like, oh, I have a local group of people, 10 of them, you know, who, whoever can come on a Thursday night, we get together and play games. Well, then it's like, okay, well, that's, that's not great. But if you say, well, I have a, a game of the week where every week I send out um, a specific exercise. I have leaders throughout the entire nation who are doing similar work. Like you could even partner with everybody at FMI. Like go through the whole FMI list and be like, who's got a gym, you know, call these people up and be like, who are the people who would be able to partner with something like this and perhaps even do it now? You know, I'm even, I'm even thinking like now is just such a good time, especially because you said as a gym owner, you're not working right now in, in the gym. So like, you've got this opportunity now to say, okay, how do I infiltrate the online space and you could do it easily through this methodology, you know, like imagine if those 10 kids, they met on Zoom or they met on Google Hangouts or whatever would be easiest for them to access. Um, and then you can grow that group. Say, hey, invite your friends. Hey, we're going to do like this and maybe even do stuff individually. Like, OK, here we go. Whoever can do the most jumping jacks, you know, in a, in the next 15 minutes, here we go. And then you're just like champion them. And as soon as they're done, they sit down and cheer on the other people, you know, you could get, and it's 15 minutes, even if it's 15 minutes, but it's yeah. just getting it started, right? Okay. So, so then as, as this grows, you will have proof. So your, your goal right now, like your homework after this call is to figure out, first of all, what is the real thing you're going to create? And I've painted a picture, but you might, you might say, well, this is, I don't like this part. I'm not going to do that part, but this part I like, I'm going to keep it or I'm going to change this. You want to figure what is it you're actually going for then I want you to see how fast can you get proof that that is happening. Okay. okay. So probably the fastest end would be, I would create like maybe, maybe 10 or 12 different like games, which you probably already have, you know, but you're going to have to write them out, right? You're going to have to say like, here's what it is and here are the directions or whatever. Uh, maybe it's better or easier for you to do a voice memo explaining it. Um, you could even do like voice to text where you explain it on Google. If that's easier, you could do that where it texts it out. And then now you've got it all written out and you can just copy and paste it. Maybe you do a video. Okay, everybody, here's the game. Let me explain it to you. Here's how it works. Like go ahead and get started. So however you're going to capture those and then organize them. Okay. Here's, here's this exercise. Here's this exercise. Da, da, da. And you'll reuse them. You don't, you don't need to have like 775 exercises. You know, you need like Probably you're going to need at least 25. And if you did, if you did those 25 twice, you'd have a whole year. So you do the same exercises twice in a year. That's great. And 25 exercises, that's not that many, right? So if you create your bank of your 25 things, then you say, okay, now maybe, maybe the next step is you create the Canva, you create your Canva template, you put in the elements of the things that make sense for promoting it, or maybe how to get on the list to get the workouts or whatever makes sense. Um, then you have those now, boom, you've got your 25 of that. Then you say, okay, now how can I implement this for my group of 10? What's the fastest way that I can get them up and going? Is it a phone call? Maybe you get all the parents to get their kids on a phone or FaceTime, or it doesn't matter. Just get something going 
so that you've got some proof that it's working, you know? And then the faster it can get up, the better. Awesome. I love it. I love Good. it. Good. Genius. How, cool. How is this all feeling for you? Genius. It's genius. I mean, I've got like a Facebook page, but, and some photos, but it's not, you know, I can't be like, oh yeah, I'm actually doing this. Go to my Facebook page. You know what I mean? Like, right. Exactly. The judges are going to go. Like, let's be honest. That's right. Especially yeah. on the moment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be so much easier if you, once you create this stuff, even for you, it will feel real. So once you like what a lot of women do is they have this like, um, well, when I win, then I'm going to do all these things. And they, they have this idea that, well, once I win, I'll have enough motivation to actually do all the stuff I want to do. But really it has to work backwards because people need to know, they need to know in order to trust you, they need to have the proof that you actually going to do this so I can trust you with this title, right? So by doing these things, you are going to trust yourself with the title. And then you can always work with anyone else. Like think about all the different organizations in the fitness industry that you have personal contacts with that might be interested in promoting this type of thing. You know, like you, you know, these people, you've been in this industry for ages. You could reach out to the YMCA and partner with the YMCA. Hey, why we're, you know, you want to, I'm doing this thing on fitness on Thursday, you know, find all of the churches in your area. Hey, we're promoting this thing for, for youth fitness. People would love this, you know, schools right now would love this kind of thing. You know, I would actually be interested. One thing you could consider is researching what are schools doing right now for that age range to satisfy the PE um, requirement while everybody, while the schools are closed, like what do they have a to do? Of them aren't doing anything? Really? Oh. Yeah, I know around here, granted, it's so maybe we're not that conscious, but yeah, yeah. But so maybe that's something that you could consider even reaching out to, as you know, once you get it developed and it's and it looks real. Once you have something, then you can show it to someone and they'll see it and they'll be like, oh, well, yeah, we might be interested in that. Because imagine if people could, if they could join your list and do that routine and write a little reflection that they did it at home, that takes pressure off the PE teacher trying to teach people basketball or something, you know? Like, yeah. then that could satisfy that curriculum that's needed across all of the schools right now. A lot of schools aren't going to go back for the end of the year. So these kids are going to have to pass these grades from home, you know? And, and a lot of my guess is that a lot of obesity, it's not just the youth, it's coming from the parents too. So if a parent is not outside, you know, whatever, doing, you know, playing basketball, whatever, tennis or something, the kids is going to do it. So a lot of children are getting that from the parent, you know? So the parent's not going to say, okay, kids, let's, let's run around the house six times. Here we go. They're not, but you will. And the parent would love if you did that for them, you know? So you've got some marketing channels here. You've got some, some places that, that you can reach out. So now we talk about Okay, so how do you communicate this in your interview? Because now it's going to be cool. Once you get this dialed in, it's going to be like really great. And people are, what your goal will be is to get people to, in your interview, to talk just about this, to be so excited about it, to have all these kind of questions for it. And then you will have created in the back of your mind in preparation, strategic stories that you'll want to share. So you will share probably the, the story of how you, this used to be just hyper local, but then as soon as the stay at home, uh, shelter in place thing was put into place that then you had to get creative to really get it online. And so you created the exercise of the week and then you started a mailing list. And within the first week you had 150 people on your mailing list. And then after that, you were able to partner with churches in the area and with da 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 and schools. And, and then you were able to meet with the governor on the phone because now the governor wants to have you have your classes in those. And, and then, so you'll start to collect those stories so that then when the judges ask you, um, what's been your favorite vacation? Instead of saying, oh, that time that I went to Greece, like three years, your favorite vacation will be back to this project. Well, truly my favorite vacation was when my gym was forced to close last month and I was on vacation. And the best part about it is what came of it. These exercises of the week that I was able to create on my vacation from work, the thing that people would have thought was terrible, what has come of it has been amazing. Let me tell you about this. Let me tell you about. So then all of a sudden you are able to lead your interview into some really epic thing, you know? So when they say, well, how, if, if you become the next title holder, uh, what will you do on social media to continue to promote the pet? Oh, well, 
guess what? I have an answer for that. Social media has helped me so much to grow my youth fitness link. In fact, in the first week of announcing my weekly videos or my weekly whatevers, I was able to get X amount of followers. And I know that as this continues, we'll grow more and more. And so my goal is to now, as with a title, with a sash and crown on, I'll be able to still speak into the lives of youth around the world, uh, encouraging them around the area of fitness through my exercise of the week. So everything that they ask you, you'll be able to come exactly. back with, hey, look, I got this epic thing because it covers all of the area. What do you want your legacy to be? I want my legacy to be the fact that I have helped youth around the world lower obesity. I want to see an actual lower, and right now North Carolina is at 31%, and that's, and that's around the United States. But around the world, there are people who struggle with obesity. My goal is that I will help the youth, and I do it through my youth fitness link. We have these weekly exercises, and then boom, here you go again. You're sharing, so you'll over, in the course of a five-minute interview, let's say, you'll share slivers of this project. You'll share it with each one of your answers. So they'll, they're going to be like, wait, what is it? This is fascinating. So how do you get the information out? Well, how many people do you have? Well, what are some of the transformations? Well, how did you connect to the school? Well, what other sponsors are you considering to get? Now they're going to be focused in on that, and you won't have to answer these silly questions about like, you know, what's your favorite food, you know? Perfect. That's yeah. the goal. So then all, so once this becomes a beast, then it's going to be easier to talk about an interview. And then it is going to wipe out the person who's like, oh, I've been working with the Relay for Life. I raised a thousand dollars and I do it every year. And you're like, yeah, that's what the last girl said. And you come in being like, bam, I got my youth fitness link rocking now, you know? <laughs> oh, cool. Good. Does that feel, does that answer your question? Does it feel that's, right? That's, that's tremendously helpful. Thank you so, so much. Good. My pleasure. Is there anything else that you want to cover? Thank you so much for doing the virtual pageant summit too. I haven't yes. caught up today, but I'm watching it at night. So thank you oh, so man. much. For Wait that. until you it's see awesome. today's. I it love is, Lucia. Uh, I she's love. wonderful. I she jumped on there real quick and then I had to go. I was like, oh. Oh, it's so good. Oh yeah. Awesome. You're going to love it. Good. I'm so glad that you are enjoying that. I'm glad that it's helping. Yeah. Thank you. Ooh, wasn't that good stuff? Oh, I hope you learned so much from her. I know I had so much fun doing this strategy call with her as we usually do. It's fun. So two things. If you need to hear more of these strategy sessions because they're so good and you can learn so much from them, then just search strategy sessions because I have a few more clients that also agreed to be recorded. So you'll be able to look at the behind the scenes of their calls as well. And then if you are ready to schedule your strategy session, Session, you can go to winapageant.com slash coaching. That's going to take you to my calendar so you can see what appointments are available and when you can book yours. And you'll also see pricing options there, which types of calls are available and how much do each of them cost. And you can book your call directly from there. I cannot wait to work with you. Head over to winapageant.com slash coaching to check it out. I'll see you next time.